makes it a little better if you do screen dash capital S name. So if you're SSH, let's SSH into a, another VM. So now we're in the other, v we're going to do screen dash S self. Oh, no one caught my typo and I can't see anything on my keyboard. Dash S self. So looked like nothing happened, right? But we are now within a screen session. Now you can, and what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to show you is the killer app that got me involved in screen in the first place. This is the thing that made this super useful for me. So you start your screen session. We already started that. We're going to start our application, and I'm not going to start the same one that we did here. I'm just going to do top. Okay? So if people here use SSH on a regular basis, what happens if you're on SSH and then you close your laptop or you lose your network connection, your Wi-Fi cuts out? What normally happens? You kills all the processes on your term on your uh, session. So if I were to do this, it's even warning me. We're done, right? That session would be gone. But we're running screen, so let me go back to the slides so I don't get ahead of them like usual. So if you accidentally lose your connection, like I just purposefully lost my connection, we can go back into screen. All the applications that you had running in that screen session are still running in the background. So now you can come back and pick up right where you left off. So we're going to reattach screen with a screen dash R. We're going to SSH back into that machine. <laughs> I don't have the command history there. Type slower, think more. So we'll do screen dash R, and we pick up right where we left off. So anybody that was unaware of that, this was the killer feature for me. We had uh, some of our application people that were, this is how they were managing their sessions. They would go from their Windows workstation, RDP into a, a Windows server, and then SSH into our Linux servers. And then they would run long-running processes from there, so that way they could detach from RDP and reattach. And we'd say, hey, we, have, we need to reboot the Windows server that you're working on. When can we do this? They said, Thursday. We're like, no, we have a patch. We need to run now. Uh, so I needed to try to find a way for them to be able to run their long-running tasks and still be able to get rid of. Now, they still live the RDP lifestyle. I don't know why, but that's what they want to do. But now, if they run it within a screen session, they can shut down those SSH sessions, keep their processes running in the background, and pick them up later. Is that a feature anybody might find useful? OK. So let's go back. So we picked up where we left off. And you could see we picked up where we left off. So and I just explained that. If you lose your connection, screen will allow you to pick it back up as if nothing ever happened. So how to install screen? Do I have a quick? OK, the, the question was, how long will that last? As far as I know, as long as the machine stays up. Uh, it doesn't survive a reboot. I've tested that. Um, yeah, it, as far as I know, it'll stay up you know, as long as the machine, indefinitely. That's as far as I know, though. So any other questions? And I can't really see much, so you would have to call attention to yourself if you had one. OK, so how to install screen. On Red Hat or older Fedora systems, yum install screen, and it's in the standard repos. On newer Fedora, it's DNF install screen. This is definitely going to go off the end of the screen. Uh, let me scale this down a little bit and see if that looks better. Yes. That is an excellent question that I do not have the answer to. Uh, I don't know how they do it. Uh, it's, Screen and Tmux both do the same thing in that regard. I don't know what method they use to do that. I'm not a programmer, so I'm not sure how they're making that happen. Uh, we could talk about that later if you want. You try to try to look it up. So under uh, Debian, Ubuntu, any of the uh, Debian uh, varieties, uh, sudo apt-get install screen or sudo apt-install screen these days. Um, 
on the BSD, oh, because I scaled it back, I'm losing some, uh, some of my screen here. Okay, under FreeBSD, I actually installed FreeBSD just to try this out. Uh, if you CD user port sysutil screen and make install clean, it installs screen with no problem. And then below this, I had uh, both SUSE and Slackware had it in the default. Uh, I did a default install of both of them, and it was already installed, so I didn't have to install it. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, th th those were the instructions I followed to make it happen. So if uh, someone more familiar with BSD has an easier method, that works as well. Okay. I, I'm not really a BSD guy. I did it just to, just to give proof. If there's a better way, then use the better way. That's great. Um, so how we install screen. There's a control character, and I'm sure all the Emacs people are cringing right now. You do control A. Once you do control A, screen is now paying attention to the next thing you type. That's your actual command. So control A is your main modifier. Uh, type control A and then do the command. So we'll just do as an example. So we're in a screen session here. Uh, so if I do control A, question mark, that gives us uh, just a help page with default key bindings, which is pretty helpful. Uh, there's lots of stuff on there I'm not going to be explaining. I'm not going to go through all of those. Uh, just a small section of it, but helpful stuff if you're looking for that command you can't find. So let's go back to the slides. So now let's get to the multiplexing part of this. Let's get to the part where we can do more than one thing in a single terminal or if you're sitting at, a, uh, at an actual server and you're logged into the console. A lot of useful commands in here too. So we're going to do Control A C to create a new window. So when we do Control A C, we're back in another prompt. So we could do, you know, anything from here. Just so we have something on the screen. So now we can switch between sessions by number. So our previous one was Control A zero. This one is Control A one. So you can go through and you can have many, many screens open. You can select them all by number. You could select them other ways too. I'll get to that in a few minutes. Oh, we'll get to it right now. Uh, we can browse through them in sequence. Let me start a third one just because it makes this much more interesting. Let's do Control C, Control A, C. So I just opened two other ones. Okay, I just throw IRSSI up so you can see something here, but I have no network connection, so nothing cool is going to happen. So if we do Control A N, it goes to the next screen. So I could do Control A N again, and we'll see our LL, and then we have a blank session. If we do Control A P, it steps through the previous ones. So there's lots of ways to actually get through the different screen sessions. Now, lots. It's, I don't remember, you know, someone asked me this in the past, it was a, a largest number, it was 256 or 512, something like that. Um, I think it would be a serious management problem if you really wanted to push that limit, but it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, we can detach screen. Now you saw I detached screen forcibly earlier. Now that would be your typical, you've lost the network or you've, uh, you know, all of a sudden you, you close your laptop and walk out of the room. Um, things work a little better if you detach from your screen session correctly, which is to do control A D for detach. Um, because once in a while, if you just slam it closed or you just, you know, close out of your terminal and you don't shut it down right, screen or SSH doesn't quite get that you're gone and won't let you reattach as easily. But you can, however, reattach. You, you just start getting louder. You could do uh, DR for detach first and then reattach. You could do RR, you know, the, the more caps you put in there, the more forcefully it goes about trying to reattach. But screen-r should work just fine. And you'll notice, you, you probably noticed earlier, sometimes the screen scrambles a little bit as it resizes the text for the size window you have there. Small side effect, but it works okay. Ah, control A N. we can go through our sessions here. So. The screen instance. 
Uh, all the screens within it are inside. You would have to you would exit it just like you would exit any bash shell to get rid of a particular in instance. Or there are other methods which we're going to get to in a minute. Yes. Here, I'll do it again for you. Just so if we do Control A D, it says detached from, and it gives the PID and the name. I always forget to do a name, so I have to guess by the PID because that's the way I live. Um, so let's see, split screens, this gets really interesting here. So if we do control A, capital S, we get a vertical split screen. So now, if we do, and I'm getting way ahead of the, I mean, let me go back to the slides for a second, make sure I do everything here. Uh, we could also do a horizontal split screen with the pipe. Uh, that works in newer versions. If you go back to Red Hat 6 for the moment, uh, it doesn't do the horizontal pipe. That's a minor side note. Um, and you switch between your screen windows with control A tab. So that's what I was going to show next. I wanted to get to the slide. So if we do control A tab, now we have the bottom screen selected. But there's nothing in there yet. So I could do control A 4 and it'll pull that IRSSI session in down there. No. Start with zero. Do control A 3 and it pulls the IRSSI session in there. So we can change what's in those. So I could do a control A N and get the next screen so we can flip through those screens individually. You see, see it took a second and then it got, oh, I'm in a smaller screen. So it uh, pulled the top in there. So you can use this and then we can do control A pipe and split that horizontally now. And you know, on this low res screen, this works out great. Um, <laughs> So we'll do control A zero. We'll pull, oh, that's the top one. Let's do one of the other ones there. Yep. Running out of things. What's that? Uh, it's the pipe. You do control A and then the pipe. So control A and then shift backslash. Ah, excellent question. Uh, this gentleman asked, are these key bindings modifiable? Yes. There's a screen RC file. You can change all of these. And if you like screen and you use Emacs, your main modifier is control A is a conflict. You can change it to whatever you like. So that's, that's an easy problem to solve there. Someone asked me how many times can you divide it up? Again, it's a lot uh, on a low res screen like this. It's going to become one character per window very soon, which is not as useful. But you can divide them up quite a bit. And to eliminate one of those split windows, you do control A, capital X. So let's go back, let's get rid of one of these, Control A, capital X, and that gets rid of one of those things. In fact, I can do it again. Control A, capital X. All right. Right, it doesn't kill those screen sessions. Those screen sessions are all still running. All it does is gotten rid of the window that you're looking into on that. Sort of like minimizing a window if you were in a regular window manager. So couple other useful features. So that's most of the window manipulation stuff, although there's other stuff too. Um, you can also log a session within it. I don't know. Uh, if you're about to um, start working on something and you want to get a capture of everything that happens on the screen, Control A, capital H gives you that. Top is not a great thing for that. So if we do Control A, capital H, if you watch the top of the screen, oh, it's in stuff you can't see. Uh, creating log file, screen log dot zero. So now if we do Yep, ls, cat. No one's catching my typos. Okay, so now we could do Control A, capital H again. That will close our screen capture. And now we could do, uh, ah, I could forget the file name. So it just got our LS and our proc screen. So we can get a continuous running log of uh, all, of our, all of our screen session. There's also, if you do control A, lowercase h, it takes a screenshot. It says screen image written to hard copy dot zero. So if we do, and it shows exactly what was on the screen before, which is less interesting. Hold on a second here. So. 
it shows the end of that session. So what it's done is it'll just take a quick screenshot. That's helpful. Sometimes you run a command and you go, oh, I didn't you know, pipe this to a file. I need this for later. You can grab that. Handy stuff. Um, here's, the, here's the real reason that I ended up using screen is you can lock your screen session very easily. So if you do control A, lowercase x, simple lock. You can unlock it, so if you're at a terminal in a data center, you can lock it if you walk away if you're logged in as a root, which is handy at times. Now, you can get a list of all your active screens and choose between them. So you can get a menu with all the screen sessions. You do Control A quotes, and you're going to see one flaw, which we're going to fix in a minute. So if we do Control A quote, there's all our screen sessions. Unfortunately, they all say, Bob at Red Hat, they're a bash session. Not very useful, and I believe our very next command will be naming them. So if you do Control A, capital A, which is a handful with the hand, but deal with it. Uh, if we do Control A, capital A, we can name each of these screen sessions. So we could do Control A, capital A, because that's what's on the screen at the moment. Go to the next one. We'll do Control A, capital A. I'm not running really beefy applications here, so this is not... Uh, in the next one. Let's do. Kind of. I'll get to that in a few minutes. If you get, if I don't answer it in a couple minutes, you ask me again, and I'll not know the answer then either. Um, so we name that one MC. Let's name this one. So now we've just made this useful because we can see what all of those sessions do. Unfortunately, it doesn't pick that up automatically necessarily. So, what, this one? No, no, this is, this is from within the program where it gives you a list of every screen instance that's open at the moment. Does that, does that answer your question? Okay, I wasn't sure if I had. Sometimes I don't. Um, so let's go back. So, naming the sessions is helpful. Okay, and this is something I found after I was using it for a little while. There's actually a cut and paste within screen. I don't know if you guys have ever been at something like a VMware session where you can't cut and paste out with the mouse, and you have to cut out something ugly like a UUID, and if you need to paste it into VI, it's kind of difficult because you have no way to grab this you know, giant hexadecimal number. Screen actually has its own cut and paste functions, which work within the screen sessions. So if you do control A, left square bracket, it puts you into cut mode, which lets you scroll through the screen and the entire scroll back buffer that screen has. Um, you then use the space, but you, you move the cursor to where you want to start, hit the space bar, it'll highlight, hit the space bar again, and then when you get to, so then you could exit out of, if you were looking at your Etsy F stab, you could then go into where you need to edit it, do control A, right square bracket, and it pastes that information out. Let me demonstrate. So we'll do, get something ugly like that. So we'll do control A, left bracket, cursor up, I hit space, started highlighting. We highlight, oh, I highlight too much. Hit space again, that's now in the buffer, so now we could do, oh, there's already an example there, just like it. I wonder if it's the same thing, let's see. Oh, uh, is that comment unreadable? Let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna add in anyway. So let's do Control A. Right curly, or right square bracket, not the curly bracket, and it drops the UUID in there. That look useful? When I found that, I was stunned. That was really, really helpful for me. So I'm not saving that. Um, let's go back to the slides. Any other questions so far? No. The slides are actually available now, but I'll give you the, uh, they're, they're at the beginning there. I'm going through stuff very quickly. Anybody have any questions? 
There are cheat sheets for screen, and my sources at the end will have all of that. And again, all of these slides are available on my GitHub page, so you don't have to bother trying to scramble writing these down. Just get the, the one for the presentation, and everything is in there. Okay. That places the text at the cursor location. Um, okay, I just explained this, unfortunately. By making the text too big, it's off the bottom of the screen. Okay. So you can also customize screen when, when it starts up. You can uh, edit your, it's a dot screen RC file. It's an Etsy screen RC, and oddly, Etsy, Etsy screen RC. I don't understand the naming convention there, but it is what it is. Uh, you can do things like change your key bindings, uh, start up screen sessions with applications already running, and you can actually define a line, which is gobbledygook, unfortunately, um, but it will give you status of everything at the bottom. I'm going to show you how this works in a minute. So I did the top part of this. I just set up a sample screen session that starts bash, it starts MC, it starts, what else is in there? Top and IRSSI, just our example things. And then it puts in stuff I found on the internet. Um, the hard line, which is basically a status line along the bottom. So this gives us, okay, I just explained all that. So let's go to that screen. Let's exit out of here. Uh, oh, here's another command. You can do control A, forward slash, and it quits out of everything. Or you could screw it up. I'm sorry, it's control A backslash. If you hit the correct, if you hit the wrong slash, it doesn't work. Um, control A backslash kills all of your windows and exits you out. Is that similar to a question someone was asking before? If it kills your session? This actually quits all of your sessions. So I'm going to exit out as this user and log in as Murph. Typing in the dark, much more difficult. So if we do screen now, I have that screen RC config for this user. So when it comes up, if you look, we've started off in IRSSI. If I go through, we'll just step through with control A N. There's a bash. There's MC. And there's top. And if you also look, if you look along the bottom, you can see it shows what session you're in. Oh, I can't get the shadow to go there. Um, you can see at the bottom it's marked three perf, and that one is highlighted. So it's actually showing you which screen session you're in, and it has the time and the date and uh, what the, the uh, host name of the system is on the, on the left. And you can step through. So does that answer your question from before? So yeah, you can set that up in your screen RC. Um, but it's a helpful way to go through it. Now you can do things like split screens if you wanted to. What's that? Yes. Yes, unless you were to run it explicitly without that screen RC, which you can spec. See, you could uh, not have it run automatically. You could specify a screen RC file if you like when you start it up, um, and then you could subsequently, you know, substitute in a blank one if you didn't want that. But by default now, this user gets that that line at the bottom. Any other questions? Okay. We are almost at the end here. So, someone asked about sources. So, uh, the main source I used was the GNU user manual on GNU.org. Um, Linode had a nice, uh, nice uh, little uh, tutorial and an explanation of what the commands do, which was very helpful. A site called Aperiodic had the key binding cheat sheet. Someone asked about a cheat sheet. Uh, a periodic is the one that I believe was the, the nice one for that. And the slides are available on my GitHub. It's actually github.com slash murphnj slash screen presentation. Tell you what, I'll pull the first slide back up in a minute and it'll be on the screen. So uh, if anyone wants to contact me, I, I'd like more questions, but if anyone wants to contact me, you can email me at murph at member.fsf.org. Um, I'm also on the Fediverse at, at murph at fostodon.org. I have questions, but that has run off the screen because of our large typeface. Um, let me put the, there we go. There's where you can find the slides. So, hey, can someone turn the lights back up, actually, so we can, this could be a two-way conversation? 
because otherwise I'm sort of talking into the darkness. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I was waiting for the inevitable, the inevitable, why not Tmux? Um, everything I've done here, you can do within Tmux. And if you like Tmux, use Tmux. Tmux is wonderful. It's a great program. I have no, this is not a, this is why you should use Screen instead of Tmux. I'll tell you why I use Screen. Because in my environment at work, I was looking for a tool to do this sort of thing, and Screen was already installed on all of our production servers. So instead of making a change to Tmux and redoing everything, I already have Screen available. So if Screen is available, all these things work in Screen. If you're an Emacs user or you're doing things from scratch and you like Tmux better, by all means use Tmux. Tmux does some things better than this. It doesn't do everything. Some of the more esoteric stuff Screen can do, I don't believe Tmux does, but it does most of it. And it does some of the things better. Some of the persistence in your sessions, I believe Tmux does do better. You can just save it off and pick it up later. But I haven't messed with it. Again, it's, that's not important enough for me to make a production change across all of my servers. So I'll work with screen. Yes? As far as I know, it does not. There are other tools to do that. This is not that tool. What's that? Cluster SSH is the one that I couldn't come to mind. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is not that tool. You know, there, there are other things to do exactly what you're asking for, but this ain't it. And yes? Yeah, yes, you can do that. I didn't, like I said, I cover absolutely everything, but you know, it's, yeah, no, the, you, you can do multiple name sessions. Absolutely. Any other questions? Thank you. That's the other inevitable question. It's a program called TPP, and it does all text slides. Uh, it was also available, I know, on Fedora, just uh, DNF install TPP, and it's there. It's, uh, you have to have Figlet installed to do that. TPP, if you tell it do text huge, it does that on its own. Yeah, TPP is a neat little program. Um, uh, does anyone recall, did Klatu use that in his presentation? I just went and found this on my own. I don't want to, yeah. I was looking for a way because screen is an all text utility. I felt it was in the spirit of doing a screen demonstration to do the slides all in text. Of course, the fact that the text ended up too small to read is a sad byproduct of that enthusiasm. But uh, TPP, yeah, all of your slides end up as uh, text files. I bet I don't have to, okay. It's very readable. Actually, I presented this when people said, oh, can you send us your slides? I'm like, you know, it's not PowerPoint, it's not gonna run. But you can, you can just step through it, it's all text with modifiers, just like its own little kind of pseudo markup language. Um, so you can change colors, you can put when the new pages are. Uh, it's very simple. And like I say, if you didn't, you know, if you're on a Windows machine and you wanted to inspect my slides, you could pull it up and get the gist of it. You know, you can read all, all the text is perfectly readable, all the markup, you know, text green. Kind of obvious what that's going to be. Uh, you know, if you do begin output and end output, that's where it does the little box around it, signifying that it's things you should type in. You know, I could show you that. Oh, Notepad++, plus plus. I'm like, Notepad does? Oh, Notepad++, plus plus. okay, that makes some sense, Notepad. <laughs> Here, let me step forward to something green. Yeah, see the, where it's stuff you type and it's got a green boundary around it? That's the uh, begin output, end output. So they give you a little, you know, tools to do that sort of thing. Yeah, that's, that's the, the two questions I, I feel cheated if I don't get are why not Tmux and what the heck is that program you're using to do your slides? So. Anything else? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. The serial stuff, I'm not sure if Tmux encompasses all of those. Screen has direct serial access. Now that you mentioned it, I, you know. Unfortunately, that's one of the things I never use with it, but that's one of those more esoteric things that it can be really useful for. Um, 
Yeah, and it works. I wanted to do, I initially wanted to do this presentation like on a TTY, you know, like on a, on a virtual TTY on this. You think projectors are funny getting working normally? Yeah, try getting it working on the TTY. It's even much more hit and miss than your normal tempting the demo gods with, with this stuff. So I went, you know. I was SSH into the remote server, and then screen is running locally on that server. If you SSH into those hosts from within that window, you, it doesn't do it natively. You can't, you can't natively tell screen, pull up a session on that machine, but you could certainly open up a window, SSH into that, and then have more than one host on there. So you can kind of brute force it. There's another feature that's on here that some of you may find useful, and I don't think I could demo too quickly. But you can actually do terminal sharing with screen. Really cool feature that I found out I cannot use at work under any circumstances because of the security implications. You have to open up some stuff. But if two users are like, like if two users are logged in as root, if you know I'm an admin and you know my my partner who's an admin there, like ooh look at this, connect to this screen session because we can both log in as root on that machine. Uh, you can actually do an attach, I believe it's capital A, although I would look it up before I put money on it. Um, you do screen capital A and the either name or the PID, and two people can share the same screen session and type at the same time. Now, the way we have our system set up there, locked down to a point where that's never going to work. Um, but people on normal systems could get away with that, and you could do it with normal users, too. You can actually set it so any user can share their their screen session with somebody else. Obviously, the security implications of that could be horrifying. That's why we lock it down. But it's something you could. Yeah, yeah, and you could just start typing and screw them up, yeah. Stepping the same. Sure. No, well, we could do it as the same user even with our, in our lockdown environment. But normally, like, I could set, and I forget what it is because I haven't done it, and so because we can't do it in our environment, I haven't looked at it in so long, you change the permissions on some file, and then different users can share that session. No, well, you get a screen session. You log in, with, you know, log into the system. You do a screen attach, and it's like any other screen session where you pull up screen, and you're in their screen session. Like I say, security implications, bad. Don't turn this on unless you're ready to deal with the consequences of that. That's why we don't, like, as soon as I saw that, I went, hey, we could do this. Hey, that's great. I looked at it and went, oh, no, no, not turning that on. That's not happening. Because it, there, there's the, the, the thing for that. Yeah, it's, it could be a really bad idea, but you can do it. But you do have to jump through quite a few hoops to make it happen. So it's not going to have, don't be afraid of screen for that. By default, you cannot do that. So don't worry about it. At least as far as I've seen. Maybe if you have some really obscure distro, they've decided, hey, this is a great idea, and they have it turned on. I don't know. Any other questions? Happy to answer them. Yes? Absolutely. Uh, as close as we have, and I did show it before, Control A question mark gives you the key bindings. Uh, let me make that full screen. Control A. Ah close the wrong window. There we go. So if you do control A question mark, it gives you a cheat sheet of most of the key bindings. Is that, that what you were looking for? Is that what who was asking for the cheat sheet was looking for too? I forget. Okay. That's handy. I've forgotten about that. I never use that. I drop out and go to the man page and do it the hard way because it's the way I am. Any other questions? Anything else? Yes. Oh, or, or dash list actually does that. I always type it out. You, you just taught me something. You could do dash ls. OK. You saved me two keystrokes you know, 100 times a day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So any other questions? Um, yeah, if anyone has anything else, uh, talk to me afterwards. I'm more than happy for uh, questions or constructive uh, criticism. I'm all for it. And, uh, that's a little bit quicker than, the, than average, but uh, I've done this quicker than this under pressure. So, okay, if no one has.
Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. I'll put that back up if anybody wants the slides later.